Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking about materials and how materials apply to three-dimensional objects. Uh, right now we're using our vertex colors on our um, vertices to color our object, but really what if we just wanna make it one full color? Uh, I'll show you how. And this is gonna lead us into a bunch of cool little episodes like how to light, realistically light, realistically light a three-dimensional object in space. So in order to do that, we need materials. So let's dive into it and start with color. Let's go. All right, so in order to generate realistic three-dimensional scenes inside of whatever graphics or game engine that you're currently building, we need to understand materials. Materials are on everything. Um, take the chair and the image you see before you, for example, where it's made up of wood. The wood is a certain gloss. It's a certain, you know, finish. It has a certain color. And then on top of the chair, there's the pad that is a little red and, or and that's like burgundy with a different shine factor. And then we have a tire that has a metallic rim, but a rubber outside, but the rubber's a different shine than the rim. And it's a little reflective, you know? And then we have the glass, which is transparent. And then there's water inside and water is just another freaking material that we need to understand. But in order to make these realistic three-dimensional scenes, we need to understand each material and how it works in a 3D environment. So this episode is going to be super simple. It's just going to be color. So it's not like we're going to do be making realistic Xboxes in this episode, but just kind of look through each one of these, realize what's different from the other. What, how is the light reflecting off of it? Is it matte? Is it gloss? Is it transparent? You know, just look through each one of these and see what you can tell about the material and what defining factors make up that object. And yeah, that, that'll kind of guide you in the right direction. So let's get into code because I'm getting a little anxious. Okay, so back in the code, we have a rotating cube that is made up of vertices that have different colors. And you can see the colors being interpolated across each vertex to its corresponding vertex. And it generates these really pretty, um, you know, gradients across each triangle. But instead of this, let's just make this cube one whole color. Yeah, let's add a material to it. Let's go back to the code. Let's go to types. I'm gonna start in types under core. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna add another uh, struct and I'm gonna call it material. It's as easy as that. Just add a material, sizable. All right, so there's two properties I'm gonna add to this guy, and I'll tell you why um, two in just a second. I'm gonna say color, which equals a float four. So, and we'll instantiate that to like 0 0.8. I want it to be a little gray. I don't want it to be white because then it'll blend in with the background. So let's make it like this gray color of 0 0.8 or whatever you want. You can make it red if you really wanted to. Um, and then the other property I'm gonna add is var use material color. Because we can either use the vertice color that's passed in from like our vertex when we generate our vertices, or we can use a custom material color after we have loaded our mesh. So use material color will be set to false. And I'm gonna make that make sure I type that as a Boolean. And I'm gonna set that to false because we don't actually want to use the material color until we've set a color on the object. Okay, uh, back in our game object, because this is where we're gonna be adding our material. Each object will have a material. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new variable. It will be a private variable called material. And it's private because I wanna have getters and setters for this, um, but let's instantiate that to a simple material. Underneath, uh, the bottom of this class at the very bottom, I'm going to create a new extension because I think this looks actually pretty clean. Uh, this is going to have to do with the material aspect of the game object. So under above, I'll just put material properties. And un inside this extension, I'm just going to create a uh, function for setting the color. So public func set color. And then we'll pass in whatever color we currently want as a float four value and close that off. And we can say uh, self dot material dot color equals color. Um, now that we've set our color, remember we have that use material color Boolean, we'll want to also instantiate that to true. Uh, material dot use material color equals true. 
So now we've set our game objects color, uh, the material color of our current object. Let's go into our shader and actually apply the coloring to our game object. So back here in my shaders, we need to create a corresponding structure object of material. And inside of material, we're gonna put the same thing we had before in the exact same order, don't forget that. Uh, flow for color, and then a Boolean of use material color. <coughs> All right, so before we were using, we were passing in the, um, you know, the scene constants and model constants into our vertex shader, but our vertex shader, remember, is, its job is to put points in space. So we're not gonna wanna put our material, we're not gonna wanna pass in our material in our vertex shader. What we can do is instead pass it into the fragment shader, which has to do with the coloring of our object. So inside of the fragment shader parameters, I'm gonna create a new line here, and I'm gonna go constant um, uh, material, and then it'll be the reference to a material object. Make sure this is lowercase. Well, it doesn't have to be, but I like it lowercase. Uh, and then this will be buffered one, so we have our stage in object here, rasterizer data, and then down here we'll have our material being passed in. And uh, if I build, everything should be just fine. Uh, so uh, we're still using our rasterizer data color, color that's set up here. Um, we're setting it to the vertex in color, and then it's going to the rasterizer, coming back through the fragment shader. Uh, the fragment shader then sets it to the rasterizer data's color. Well, we only want that to happen. We only want that vertex color if we haven't set material.use material color. So I'm gonna do a little ternary operator right here, which says if material uh, material dot use material color, then we wanna use the material dot color. Else we wanna use rd dot color. Uh, this is gonna be our ternary operator for color. Uh, inside, so that's our GPU stuff done, uh, or our shader stuff done in our fragment shader. Uh, let's go apply this and go to our sandbox scene. Our sandbox scene, we're adding a cube here to the scene, uh, but before we add the cube to the scene, we can go cube.setColor. Uh, we can set that color to whatever we want. So let's just set it to a nice red color. Actually, let's do a little bit lighter of a red color. We'll go 0 0.7. 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Just a, just a nicer color than red because red's kind of gross and let that build. Oh, okay. So I forgot to add the, okay. We're not actually binding. We're not sending these the material to the GPU, to the shader. And that's because when we're calling render command encoder, we're setting all the vertices stuff, but we're not actually setting the fragment stuff. So down here, I'm gonna put a space but after depth stencil state and after vertex stuff. So this will be the vertex shader. Now underneath here, we can do fragment shader stuff. Um, <clears throat> and just like we're calling set vertex buffer here, we can call set fragment buffer, set fragment bytes. So render command encoder dot set fragment bytes. Um, and then we'll set that to be our material oh boy uh, material and the length will be material dot stride man keeps on correcting just cannot get the uh, capitalization right um stride and then the index will be one because that's what we put it to inside of our fragment and i'll just go ahead and point that back out to you so in our fragment shader we're passing a material at buffer one so inside of our game object, we'll want to put the material at index one, okay? So now that we're setting our fragment shaders color, now if I press play, we should see some, well, some, some sort of a red color. I don't know what it'll look like, but okay, it's more burgundy uh, or whatever the hell that color is. But okay, so notice that you can't actually see the corners as they go by. And that's because it's just one plain color. There's no lighting being applied to this scene and the vertices aren't different colors. So we can't distinguish where they are in space. So we're gonna need to do some lighting in the future episode, which I hope you're getting pumped about because fong shading is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, now we have this, you know, three dimensional object rotating in space and it's beautiful. It's one color, it's using a material. The material just has a red color on it. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and build a scene for you uh, that I think would look pretty sweet. Um, let's go back to our sandbox scene and get rid of this cube stuff right here. Uh, and I'm gonna build this for you, I'll be right back. All right, so I've generated a little function for us. Uh, basically, it's just gonna, it's this add cubes function. And if I press play, we'll see what it actually does. Um, so it's just basically this grid of cubes that has these real, this really cool perspective of this, you know, room of cubes or whatever you want. And it's that same color that we've generated. And I'll talk a little bit about how I'm doing this just so you guys understand. Uh, so add cubes for Y, uh, basically this is gonna be the up and down, the uh, Y axis. I'm going to set the position to whatever Y is here. Um, and then I'm gonna iterate over for the columns and just add a cube for every column. Um, I'm scaling it down a little bit so they fit in a smaller space so I don't need to put the camera position to like negative 100 or positive 100. Um, and then I'm setting the color of each one of these cubes to the exact same color that I showed you with that big cube. So it's a very simple function. Uh, I removed the update statement and added this little add cubes right here um, to the build scene initializer. And yeah, that's what we have. But I've also added a couple more things. Um, one of those things being uh, this function. And so if we go to our maths class right here, I added this function random to one. And basically this will give us a, a, a random number from zero to one. Um, and then I, I could say random zero to one, actually. I'm gonna rename that. And then in our color util, so I added this folder right here, utils. Uh, and then I created this Swift file color util. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I created this random color. Now let me fix this really quick. Random zero to one, random zero to one. Now what this will do is it'll return a random float for color. See, I'm just saying float dot random zero to one, that little math function that I just did. Float dot math or random zero to one. This will return like one or 0 0.5, 0 0.2. And then it's just a random color. It's just a random color generator. And um, there's other things I wanna do with colors. So I created a color util class for like the game engine aspect. And don't forget to make that static. So we have just, we can just call color util dot random color. Now back in our sandbox scene, we can now use that right here where we're saying cube dot set color. Let's not set it to a, you know, static color. Let's say color util dot random color. Now, if I press play, you can probably imagine what's going to happen, but each one of our cubes will now be a different color on the screen, which is pretty cool. I mean, that, that's actually kind of nice. Um, so it's really pretty. I, you could probably make it so that if it's from, you know, it would make it not become a white color, but that's not too important. Um, so yeah, uh, let's give it a little bit of animation because I like that. Uh, inside of our cube, because I don't wanna iterate through every single object in my scene right now. I just wanna do it on the cube and we can delete this later, but I'm just gonna update super.update delta time. And I'll just update this update function, update the update function to say self.rotation.x plus equals delta time, self.rotation.y uh, plus equals delta time. This meant to be plus equals and uh, instead of just doing equals delta time, so it's the same exact constant rotation, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna surround this with parentheses, each one of these with parentheses, and uh, say, well, we have that really cool function now, so I can go float dot random zero to one times delta time. So, well, or, you know what, we'll just do float. <laughs> We're just gonna do float zero to one right here. So some will rotate fast, some will rotate slow, um, but they'll rotate differently. Uh, let's see, let's see what that looks like. Whoa, okay. <laughs> it looks still kind of cool, but it's a little excessive. Uh, so I will add that delta time multiplication right back into it <laughs> because that's uh, horrifying actually. And we don't want that. So let's press play. Hopefully it rotates a little bit slower, fix this little syntax error. And hopefully it rotates a little bit slower and looks a little cooler, a little less uh, jittery. Um, so they start off looking pretty similar and then it just morphs into their own speed, hopefully, yeah. 
So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, that was material. Later on, we're gonna talk about lighting and lighting is really cool. It'll make these things pop out a little bit more and we'll actually be able to place lighting in the scene and lamp objects and all sorts of stuff. So get pumped. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.